only mode. Hello, hello, hello. What is up? What is up, mastermind people? Hello, hello. What's up, Anna Ashmore? Good to see you. CC Charlie Turner, Craig Prentice, Emmanuel David. Did you get that deal or what, David? Uh, Humphrey, Jeff, Carrie, Ken, Lou. What's up, Lou Ferris? Uh, Natalie. Um, Natalie, if that was you that just submitted a support ticket, take a look. I just responded to you. Uh, Philip Wayman, Ram. What's up, Ram? Dick Weiss, Ron Drugashan, Sean, Stefan, Susan, Teresa. Hello, hello, hello. What is up? Voice is raspy. I know. Tell me about it. Little raspy. Had a fantastic weekend. <laughs> Side effect of the weekend. So before we get into things, we've got about six minutes till the top of the hour. As usual, let me know if you guys need anything in the chat. A uh, little housekeeping before we really get started. Uh, just wanted to m make sure that you guys know about tomorrow's webinar. I just pasted the link in the chat for you guys. So tomorrow, I'm releasing three new little pieces of software for our local lead gen mastery students. Uh, and because you guys are sales mastermind students, I'm inviting you guys as well. We'll be giving you guys access to the pieces of software too. So be there. It's at uh, 3 o'clock Eastern. I'm doing doing well Lou thanks brother and will we have to purchase them Jesse says nope I'm giving them to you <laughs> giving free no charge no charge no charge so hint as to what they do uh, it's all around the probing and poking process Susan so there are three little scripts and utilities, pieces of software basically that we've built to supplement the process, help us automate it and get rid of our big hangups uh, in the system, if you will. That is so awesome. Thanks, Joe. You're very, very welcome. Very cool, very cool. So uh, we've been working on this for quite some time, and I finally got everything working pretty well or well enough to be able to share it with you guys. Uh, so most of the stuff that you guys see in the execution maps is still up to date, uh, but these three uh, little pieces of software aid us in the uh, in the technology side of things to, to just make it a whole lot easier uh, to automate. Uh, with macros, we're automating stuff. Uh, we're even automating the input though of you know creating all the stuff that that we're gonna do in terms of videos and then checking rankings has been an absolute nightmare and we figured out a solution for that too so three big kind of process improvements if you will on the probing and poking processes so Ryan I want to check your audio are you there brother before we get started yes yes Yes, yes, awesome. And then, let's see. John, I'm going to pull you on and just test your audio quick. Hey, John, you there, brother? Yeah, buddy, I'm here. Awesome, bro. Thanks so much. I'm going to mute you for just a couple of minutes, and then yeah, uh, I'll bring you back on. Okay. Thanks. All right, guys. So two or three minutes here. If anybody's got a question or two before we start, let me know in the chat. Happy to uh, to answer any of those while we're just waiting to kick this thing off, waiting for people to come on board. Do, 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 do. All right, all right, all right, no questions, cool. So let's go ahead and just kick this thing off. Those of you guys that are here early, good job. You guys won't miss anything. Uh, so I'm gonna show my screen. And uh, if you guys would just give me a little feedback in the chat, can you guys all see week 10 on your screen? Jimmy says he just reserved at the tide line. Awesome, brother. Yes, yes, yes. Cool, cool, cool. All right, guys, so um, today we have a very special guest with us, John Ramirez, back 
by popular demand from you guys. John was on uh, one of our calls, our sales calls, when we had our sales panel, and uh, John was the undisputed championship of that uh, or champion of that sales panel. Uh, I think that was in week five. Uh, or week six, and so I brought John back on today to kind of hang out with us, answer your guys' questions, talk sales, talk tactics, uh, plus I think we'll probably end up talking about some verticals that John has been in uh, or currently is in, give you guys some knowledge there, uh, talk about some industry-specific types of stuff, and just kind of give you guys all a little kick in the butt in terms of sales. So um, the reason that I bring that up now, I still have some housekeeping and stuff to go through, but I want you guys to be prepared for when John comes on and not be a bunch of ants just sitting there, right? So get your questions ready. Be thinking about your questions. You can even start typing them in the chat now that you want to ask John so we can make sure that we make really good use of his time. Okay, so good, just give me a two if you guys can all agree to that. We're going to make good use of John's time. If you guys ask 10 questions and that's it, we're going to be done. Right, and uh, we're not going to sit around here and, and waste everybody's time. Cool. All right, guys. Uh, one little other announcement for those of you guys that didn't hear it. Tomorrow we have a webinar for the local lead gen mastery students, and we have a big overhaul coming to our process for poking and probing. I'm going to be giving out three pieces of software for free, uh, and you guys should be there. The link is in the chat. So just a couple of quick shout outs. Uh, Greg Thorpe, man, has been uh, a little late to the party, so to speak, but been crushing it. Third consult uh, he had, and he sold three of three deals, right? Isn't that crazy? 100% conversion so far. 100%, right? Three out of three deals. So big shout out to Greg Thorpe. Um, I know that... Um, that John, you helped him with uh, with his messaging a little bit, uh, so maybe we can bring that up and we can talk about that when we bring you on. Uh, Bill Ross says, boom, woke up this morning to my second signed deal. Uh, we have in the bottom left another deal signed, 1200 bucks a month. I think this is uh, Susan Keeley's. Uh, top right, we have another deal. Uh, what I loved about this deal is that uh, this guy actually charged us one-time setup fee for call tracking of 499 bucks. So that should give you guys some ideas in there on how you guys can structure your consults and your pitches. I uh, thought that was neat, I haven't seen that done yet. And then in the bottom right, another package for the, uh, the bronze, so 1,000 bucks a month. So big shout out there. Uh, for those of you guys on the call that aren't pictured here, let me know what success you guys have had in the last week since our last Monday call, I wanna hear it. Successes, successes, successes. What did you guys do in the last week? Tell me if you got a big fat zero in terms of sales. Tell me if you got a deal. Tell me if you got two. Let's see, let's see. John says he got two. Rich says zero. Uh, got a 997 uh, deal. Uh, let's see, Teresa says 997 outline last week and another one out today. Awesome. Zero Emmanuel says, uh, Jason says 997, uh, 14.99 a month. Cool guys. Um, I feel like I'm de beating a dead horse here about the July event. Again, I feel like I'm beating a little bit of a dead horse here. I keep bringing this up. Give me a one if you guys have not signed up for the July event. Okay, give me a one if you haven't signed up for the July event. Okay, Luke, Cedric, Tuck, Kerry, Ken, Alan, CC. Guys, it's going to end up costing you guys a boatload of money if you guys don't make this decision and get your butts in gear. Okay, what I mean by that is uh, the Tideline is about to cut off their room rate that they are giving all of our customers. Okay, so what does that mean? Basically, guys, we got rooms for you for under 200 bucks a night. If you guys don't get in during the roommate room rate, which is expiring literally today or any day, it's going to cost you over $400 a night, and you're going to get a crappier room. Okay, so you're going to pay 400 bucks. all right? So be sure, get your ticket book now, right? Web1.co slash July Mastermind. I'm going to type this in here. 
go put down your deposit for the event. Again, it's just a deposit. It's 99 bucks. When you show up, we refund your money. We do this so that we could get an accurate head count. If we just said it was free and there was no deposit, each and every one of you guys would tell us we're coming, then we'd have a bunch of leftover food and a bunch of leftover seats, right? So web1.co slash July hyphen mastermind. Make sure, guys, get in before you guys end up paying through the nose, all right? We have one more open prize, and we're going to be I don't know why it says prizes, it's only one. Uh, we are going to be releasing this at the event um, and uh, making this announcement. And so this is for the most sales in the mastermind. So it's $3,000 in cold hard cash, plus a boardroom membership paid for, which is going for 7,500 bucks a year. You're gonna get a full one-on-one -on -one day with me and paid airfare and hotel for your trip to boardroom. And, uh, and your one-on-one -on -one day with me here. So uh, we have right now, I know about four guys that are pretty much neck and neck. Uh, and then one guy that's leading the pack by, I'd say probably a $1,500 or a $3,000 sale. Uh, but it's very, very, very close. Uh, any of them could end up swiping that first deal prize, right? This week's training, I'm trying to keep it light on you guys because I know so many of you guys are crushing it with sales, uh, either getting a lot of deals or you're just having a lot of consults right now. And the last thing that you guys need is 20 or 30 hours of training, right? So I'm trying to keep it light for you guys, but keep it important. Give you guys the meat, give you the stuff that you guys need. So I put in another beta member interview for you guys in there. I also had that interview with Aaron Ross from Predictable Revenue. For those of you guys that haven't really been paying attention or been on any of our calls as of late, Aaron Ross is the guy that wrote Predictable Revenue. He worked for Salesforce.com and basically invented cold email to consult. Uh, he's the godfather of that, I believe. Uh, and he, by doing this process, using it himself, and then teaching it to the sales team at Salesforce.com, they were able to increase their revenue by a hundred, one hundred million dollars in recurring revenue a year. One hundred million dollars. Okay, so this interview is is really, really good. Uh, before I get into the interview, I kind of open up and talk to you guys about my takeaways uh, of the interview, and, and then it goes over into the actual call with, uh, with Aaron Ross. So really, really good stuff there. And then um, I by popular demand, did a little video type how to ensure you can fulfill. So what happens in this mastermind, and it happens from week two and three and four all the way up until now, is that people have different times when they're getting success, right? Somebody could have joined the program in one month one, fell off, right, just came back up. Now we're starting to have success right just starting to get a couple of clients and now they're trying now they're starting to freak out in terms of fulfillment right how do i fulfill so i recorded this video how to ensure you guys can fulfill and talked about my suggestions how you guys attack it and honestly at the end of the day what's the worst thing that can happen if you can't fulfill all right this is a must watch Okay, this is an absolute must watch. I don't care if you guys are one sale in or you don't have any sales or you've done 30 sales, right? You need to watch this video. Obviously, uh, we released uh, a couple of new mastermind only offers week before last, right? That have to do with building out sites. Um, somebody in the all access group asked us, you know, if we were going to be opening up probing and poking stuff and, and all kinds of other categories have come up. So I wanted to talk about this for a second, guys. Our goal at the end of the day, can you guys guess what our goal is in terms of the done for you offers? What's our goal? What do you guys think our goal is? I want some feedback in the chat. What's our goal? All of it, right? Okay, so the reason that not all of it's available is because we have to onboard people, train people, and then we have to be able to meet your guys' demand, right? And so if we just released all the done-for-you stuff today or did it all in one batch, what do you guys think would happen? What do you guys think would happen? Faceplant, right? 
there's no way that we could get it all right the first time, right? We'd overwhelm our team, right? I'm sure just sales would go absolutely bonkers, right? If if uh, if things aren't being done correctly, they're just going to get done incorrectly over and over and over, right? And so we have to release thing and release everything in batches like we have been. So basically, right now with the offers that we have, we are completely up to speed in terms of lead kahuna uh, and that process running really, really well with the done for you, right? And as soon as you get a sale, you should be outsourcing that. That's the biggest leverage point that you guys have, okay? Then next up, now we're handling your guys' site builds, right? Okay, so the next things to come, obviously, will be probing and poking, uh, as well as um, the other link building activities that we do. And then obviously last week, or actually the week before last, I dumped in this one-on-one -on -one site review for you guys as well. So give me a three, guys, if that clears things up a little bit for you guys. Does that help? See what the end picture looks like, right? We want to be here to help you guys out. We want to be here for the long term, okay? But if I just threw shit against the wall, right, and we didn't test it, or we weren't careful with how we do it, you guys know what would happen, right? it would be complete overwhelm and complete chaos. Cool. All right, guys. That is it. We are past the announcements. It's my pleasure, guys, to bring back on John Ramirez. So, guys, again, ask your questions in the chat. So I'm going to unmute John here. Uh, unmute, unmute. All right, brother, you are unmuted. Silence was golden. <laughs> so um, first things first, before we start, uh, I just wanted to publicly thank you for helping so many of the people in the, in the, uh, in the all-access community, in the sales mastermind community, with their sales. I know that you have been absolutely bombarded at times, but thanks, man, for, for giving back with, with, with no... Uh, with no, you know, asking for reward or asking for payment or anything like that. We we really appreciate it. Oh man, it's my pleasure. I like seeing motivated people. It's I I, I live in a world where I get to see so much non motivated folk things that seeing a group that's so active is is just awesome. So Definitely. Um, anything anybody needs, you know, I'm trying. I've got. I've. I just actually onboarded my assistant to take copies of my Slack messages so that. <laughs> my VA can help me schedule these calls much better and more efficiently. There's a couple of guys in here I've missed over a couple of days. So uh, my apologies to each of you, but uh, I'll do my best to do what I can. So I'm ready to go, Joe, whenever you are. You tell me what I need to do, and I'm yes, ready. Sir, yes, sir. So guys, get your questions in for John. Uh, and just one last comment or thought. Guys, understand we are human. John is human. If we don't get back to you, it doesn't mean that we hate you or we don't like you. It means that we're busy or we missed it, right? So just give everybody a little bit of slack in here, uh, no pun intended, uh, and we'll make sure that, uh, that everybody has an awesome experience. So, um, John, the first thing that um, I wanted to talk to you about is the, the comment that Greg Thorpe brought up about you helping with a couple of his email responses. Um, he credits his 100% close rate, a lot of it anyway, I don't want to use his words or make up words for him, but to your email responses that you guys uh, put together. So you want to talk about you know, high level, uh, what those look like or consist of? Yeah, I'm, so to a degree, um, and Greg may shoot me for this, but to a degree, I, I tend not to try to issue too much private advice. So I can tell everybody who's on the call that the, the advice I offered is on the Slack group. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> what he garnered from that and what he used is probably something more along the lines he'll have to, to explain it if he feels comfortable doing so. But um, generally what, what, what varies in my approach is in the confidence side and in heading off the need for rebuttals. So I'll say this, that... Um, in sales, if sales was 2 plus 2 equals 4, if sales was a math problem, then we wouldn't be salesmen, we would be presenters. Okay? There's no mathematical equation to closing a deal. There's a mathematical equation to getting the opportunity to close a deal, but deal closing is simply based um, on your ability to read the phone call, read the prospect, 
and answer their questions. So I have a couple of rules of thumb. Uh, never ask a question you don't already know the answer to. Um, I know people usually give me wide eyeballs when I say that, but uh, when you figure out that math, it's actually very easy. The next step is to head off any potential rebuttals in your emails. You know, I, I don't, you, you guys all know, I think by now, that I don't follow the same train of thought because what this mastermind and email sequence is meant to do is be inspirational. Joe, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but it's supposed to get you motivated to find your own methodology. It's, it's, it's not going to be a perfect science for everyone, but it is a perfect science when setting up a process and a routine. Definitely. And so, so my biggest trick is to make sure that you use a process to expound on your own personality, on the way that you, you handle things. And, and for me, that's I cut all rebuttals off uh, the minute uh, I think about it. So, uh, for example, what are, the four, what are the four steps to sales, Joe? Who are you? Why should I listen to you? What do you have for me? And how do I get it? If you answer those four questions in every presentation, pitch, email, communication, if you answer those four questions, you're closing deals left and right. And you're dealing with a whole lot less of uh, the need for a rebuttal. Yep. Okay. So I'll just let me give you just some brief stuff. If you're okay with that, Joe, do you want me to go into? Yeah, sure. Okay. So so the who are you is are define who you are for this prospect. Are you some local lead gen guy sitting in your basement eating a bowl of Fruit Loops, or are you an experienced professional lead gen? Why, why should you listen to me? Well, it depends. You should either listen to me because I have excess phone calls by accident that I want to sell or because I've strategically targeted this particular niche and this particular SEO effort. Therefore, I have phone calls. What do you have for me today? Well, I don't have overflow. I have something very specific. I have a product. I have something you need. We already know that they want it. And how do you get it is you sign on the line that is dotted in the, in the words of, of Alec Baldwin. Um, but when you decide to answer those questions, Joe, uh, up front, you tend to not have, you're not chasing your tail. You're not trying to validate yourself. You're not trying to offer credentials. And frankly speaking, most of the time, you don't even have to deal with things like, can you show me your customer list? Yeah. Um, or, or can you prove to me that you know what you're doing? You, right. you have to you have to pick your route. So I, I would say that directly for for what Greg garnered is is probably tidbits of information from from some of the Slack conversations that are public. So everybody yep. should go that's back. That's what he said. Right. That's what he said. It came exactly from the Slack conversation. Right. So I for me I think the biggest thing is just making sure you answer those four questions and make sure you do it with confidence. That's the biggest yep. way to stop rebuttals. So I completely agree with what you said. Um, so an interesting kind of sidebar, when you guys go watch the content uh, of the interview with Aaron Ross uh, and us, is that he said the, 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 the biggest failure that he sees people have when they, when they follow predictable revenue um, is that they take everything so literally, and if one piece of it doesn't work, then it's all just garbage, right? He said, instead, like, you need to use it as a framework, okay? And you need to look at all the little pieces as, you know, the, the, the pieces of the puzzle that are the framework, right? So the scripts, for example, that we included um, inside the consult emails were designed for one thing, right? Guys, what were those emails designed for? Let's hear some feedback from you real quick. The scripts that we gave you for quick mail, the cold emails, what were those designed for? Start a conversation, get you guys an appointment. That was the only goal, the only goal, okay? And there's a reason that we structured it that way, okay? And I'm not arguing John's point. You guys will, you guys will understand where I'm going in a second. Most of you guys that aren't comfortable with sales, your biggest problem is what? you're not having enough conversations, period, right? You don't even talk to business owners. So if you don't even talk to business owners, how are you ever going to get a sale, OK? 
Okay, so the first goal with the cold email stack was to get you having conversations. Okay, we want to convert as many people into conversations as possible so that you can get comfortable. I believe then the second step is to really narrow down and hone in once you're comfortable on your calls and do what John just said, right? Talk about the four whys and make sure that you answer all of those explicitly in your emails. Does that make sense to everybody? Can I get a two here real quick? Okay, they are not designed for conversion, right? If you guys look at what John gave you guys in the community, right, and what we've talked about before even on the last call in week five and week six, we talked about this stuff a lot, it's the same stuff. Okay, John gives you his take on how he runs with it, and I don't disagree with it. I think it's a great approach, right? What we gave you was the way to have as many conversations as possible. Mm -hmm. Cool. Lots and lots and lots of twos, right? So then how do you get better? Once you're comfortable with the console, how do you get better, right? You get more exact in those emails that lead up to the phone conversations, right? So that you're getting only really qualified people on those consoles. But frankly, guys, until you're comfortable with the consult process, number one, and number two, you actually know what the hell you're talking about with a niche, I don't believe that you have any place trying to get real, real targeted and, and answering those four whys, right? You still have a lot to learn yet. Does that make I sense? Can I throw in there to add to yeah. that? Because I think that's actually a good point, is, is that there's... Now, what Joe provides you guys is the ability to start a conversation and then dig out the details. What are your what's your margin? What's your what's your ratio? How often do you close? Those things are all educational tools. Okay? Educational tools. They're 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 meant to teach you how to start a conversation. They're meant to teach you how to start asking questions that will give you the information you need but it's a catalyst it's an inspiration it's not a it's not a, and again I'm not contradicting the sales process but I take things to a different level so that's the answer you're gonna get from me what that what that does is it helps you become an expert you're not an expert in water damage. You're not an expert in mold. You're not an expert in drug rehab. You're not an expert in these things. You have to develop that talent. You have to be comfortable with the jargon. You have to be comfortable with, with the professionalism and, and what courtesies are expected. Each niche is completely different. What Joe is teaching when you go through these funnels is how to start and how to learn. Now, where I vary is that I typically approach my conversations as the expert and so what you guys need to use is your heads you need to use what's in between your ears and when you're comfortable enough knowing how much it costs to generate a lead when you're comfortable knowing how much money you can charge for that lead then you should all feel free to stop asking those questions and start taking the command of those four who what why and how Okay, so when I deal with the 40 or 50 phone calls a week that I get um, from you guys, you're all at different levels. And Joe, I think you, you said this uh, when you first started the conversation, that everybody came in at a different, different yep. training point, right? Well, so, everybody came in together, right, but not everybody executes at the same time, right? Or right. somebody might start and then fall off and then come back, right? Um, and so that's naturally bound to happen. Sure. But you, you shouldn't be judgmental on yourselves. If you're still in the process of learning how to make introductory phone calls, great. If you're still in the process of learning how to qualify a prospect or qualify the value of a lead, then fine. But there's going to be a point where you're comfortable enough with what's going on that you can start answering the four questions that close deals. Okay? And as soon as you're comfortable with that, you need to jump on it. Because that's the difference between an inquiry from somebody who's interested and a professional who's solving a problem. I want you guys to really think about that. If you're the expert in water damage deals in Columbus, Tucky, do you really need to play 50 questions with the customer? No, you don't. You know what your leads are worth. You know why it makes it unique. And I think that's the next thing we should go into is what makes this unique because um, I think that's one of the Definitely. biggest sales, sales issues that I, I see. 
you guys just have to get comfortable in your own skin. And so the process, the processes that are set up, the sequences that are set up are meant to get you there. Once you're comfortable, you have to make the decision on your own to begin answering those four questions and become a closer rather than a moderator. Okay? So, Joe, do you want to add anything to, to, that, to that stuff? Completely agree, completely agree. Um, real, real quick, just to echo that and kind of confirm that last point. How many of you guys have been on a console where some guy took control of the conversation, right, and basically started asking you the questions? How much is it per call, right? What's a qualified call, right? And just started, you know, asking you the four or five questions, right? Just give me some feedback in the chat. How many of you guys have had that happen, right? And it's because at the end of the day, they're probably your most ideal prospect, right? They understand the market. They've probably bought leads before. All that they need to know, does it, does it kind of fit into their criteria? And if it does, it's game over, right? And in some niches, that happens a lot. And in other niches, it doesn't happen very much. Okay, I can tell you guys from experience that in water damage, it'll happen a lot. You guys will run across these companies that have 10, 15 plus trucks doing millions of dollars a year in revenue and that are buying leads already from everybody that they can as long as it meets their criteria. You guys can easily slip in and just be another vendor. Okay? But until you're ready to have that conversation, right? Until you've you're comfortable with the process and you know the language, you know the jargon, you have no place in being the the expert, right? And leading with those four W's, if that makes sense. Does that make sense? So level one is go in, use the console outline, get to know the niche, get to know the jargon, get to know the number, sell some deals, and then step number two, right, is to become the expert, okay, and change up your sales messaging and answer all of those four questions. Does that make sense? Can I just get a three in the chat real quick? Okay, being a closer versus a commentator. <laughs> Lots of people liking that quote. <laughs> so if you guys aren't comfortable with sales, right, there, there's, there's still a boatload of opportunity just in the consult close, right? I mean, as a community, most of us, as a whole, I would say, uh, are closing like one in four, one in five, right? That's better than almost anybody has uh, out there for our average customer value. Right? Nobody's doing that in this space, and I think that's probably what John's going to lead up to next is why this is a little bit different than everything else. Yep. Cool. All right, buddy. I think All right, so there's a, there's, a, there's a few. Can you still hear me? I uh, yeah, dropped my laptop in the process. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Um, okay, so there's there's a few things, and, and maybe you get, if you guys have questions about this, you can put them in the chat window, but does everybody here understand the difference between a buying question and an objection? That's the, the, there's Sometimes they're very close, but I want to make sure that everybody understands that there is a difference between the two. A, a buying question or a buying signal versus an objection because those are two completely different monsters, and you guys need to learn how to uh, check those things. Both of those things apply whether you're an expert or whether you are asking, still asking questions to uh, determine uh, whether this is a good prospect. Either way, the, those are two things, so maybe if you have questions about that, um, you can throw them in the chat box and we can answer those. But, we got mostly uh, not sure is a couple of yeses but most of the people definitely not sure what the difference is. Okay, so w Joe, how do you want, because I, I tend to jump around, so how do you, you want to keep me on track and tell me what you want to do? You want to talk about that and then yeah, we can talk about what makes this unique? Okay, yeah. so when a customer, when a prospect on the phone says, okay, so what's your program cost? Is that a, an objection or a buying question? For most people, you're gonna think it's a buying question, <laughs> However, because your confidence level it may not be all that high, it becomes an objection. Okay, what's your program cost? My program costs $300 per call. What? Are you serious? I can get calls for $70 a piece from Home Advisor. Great. Yes, I'm sure you can. That's not what I'm selling. Listen, I don't sell phone calls. I sell opportunity. Okay? Now what makes this 
opportunity different, because everybody can sell you a phone call, is that I strategically target people who are ready to buy in your area. Everybody else, when you buy leads from brokers, when you buy leads from Home Advisor, from Home Depot, when you buy leads from anywhere else, those are brokers selling you calls. And brokers make money by selling to the highest bidder. So if you're not the highest bidder, what are you getting, Mr. Customer? Are you getting premium callers? No, you're getting overflow calls. What makes this product unique? What makes my opportunity one you need to listen to? Is that I am offering you the chance to get the phone call direct. There's no broker meddling, there's no broker fiddling, there's no bidding war, and there's no morning prayers. I'm sending you the phone calls directly, which gives you absolutely 100% more opportunity to close than anyone else on the market. That's what makes my product unique. So when you want to know what my program involves, that's what my program involves. I'm sending you 100% qualified calls. I'm sending you people ready to buy. I'm not meddling, I'm not tinkering, and I'm not vetting. You, can you tell me any broker out there who's not doing that? No. And I want you guys to know, I'm going to take the sales hat off again for a second. Did you see the confidence in which I presented that, Joe? <laughs> the con <laughs> what are you going to do to argue with me? I mean, and if anybody wants to jump on and role play, I have no problem doing that. Um, <clears throat> but you need to learn two things. One, that objections are things like, I don't have money. Objections are things like, I'm going to go bankrupt. Objections are things like, I'm too busy, per se. Those are rare, but it happens. <laughs> Everything else is a buying question. Everything else is a buying question. And when you guys in the sales group start to realize that these are not objections, they're actually buying signals, you're going to get really excited because you're going to smell a whole different world of opportunity. When somebody says, what's your program cost? Mentally, it triggers, oh, I've got to go on the defensive and now defend why my leads cost money. No, you don't. It's a buying signal. What am I going to pay? It's a question that says, uh, if I decide to move forward, what am I paying for this lead? I don't understand how your program works. Well, good. Sometimes I don't either. <laughs> <laughs> because the reality is I never meant to get into this business, but I am now. And I happen to be very good at it. And while you might be great at fixing roofs, I'm great at finding people who need their roofs fixed. Okay. So when you learn that objections in your head are really buying signals, you can turn the conversation on a dime and maintain control. Even if you're in a point where you're still new and you're still asking questions, listen, people don't like weakness. Customers don't like weakness. They want to know what they're getting. And if you can answer that with the utmost, in co uh, utmost confidence, you've got yourself a deal. So. Joe, I don't know how you want to streamline that back together and, and make it a circle, but or if we need to break it up into separate pieces, but the objection versus buying question yeah. is, is huge, and, and being able to present your offer, understanding that those buying questions that most yep. people think are objections can easily be flipped. I don't know Definitely. if you want to do role play or something like that. You tell me how you want to do this. I'm game. I think we're good there for the moment. I think we need to talk about what does truly make this different and kind of talk about that for a second. Okay. So what and makes – get your feedback on that. So, you know, one of the biggest quote-unquote objections that you guys talk about is, oh, it's a saturated market. I've gotten 75 emails from another guy. I've already been through this. I've been burned. Uh, I've been screwed over. Somebody took my money and ran, never delivered. Okay, it happens. It does happen. So let's, let's look at rule number one. Rule number one is that you have something they need. You have something that they want. You never have to get on a sales call thinking you have to convince them that they want new customers, ever. If you go into your consult thinking you have to convince them that they need customers, then you're wasting time because everybody wants new customers. 
Joe, funeral parlors have people <laughs> dying to get in. Funeral parlors have people dying to get in. The best part is they still have to sell it. And who are they selling to? They're selling to a customer who will never see the customer service. They will never see the decorations. They'll never see any of it because they're dead. <laughs> and even a funeral parlor has to go out there and sell. A funeral parlor has to close deals. Okay? So what makes this unique? It's not that phone calls are unique. Phone calls are not unique. What makes this unique is the opportunity you provide. So let's define that because Mr. Customer is going to say, oh, I've dealt with you guys before. No, I don't think you have. I don't think you have. Let me explain to you what makes this different. What makes this different is that I'm not a broker. I don't buy leads from third parties. I don't vet, tinker with, or meddle with the phone calls before you get them, which means that I don't care about the highest bidder program that everybody else cares about. I care about delivering phone calls directly to you at the time that the customer is ready to buy. That's why this conversation is unique. Anybody can sell you phone calls. Does everybody understand that? You're not selling a phone call. When you're closing deals, you're trying to separate yourself. In the marketing world, it's called a USP or a unique selling proposition. Every one of you need to stop and write out what you believe your unique selling proposition is before you get on your next consult. Because that is the number one identifying factor that allows you to stay on the phone and have them listen. Who are you? My name is John Ramirez. I do lead generation for companies just like yours. Why should I listen to you, John? Let me tell you why you should listen to me. While I might not be a big broker and I might not generate thousands of calls, I do generate highly qualified, highly targeted calls in Houston. Now, what makes me different about those phone calls is not that the phone rings because everybody can do that, but the opportunity behind it. I'm giving you a raw, unfettered, untouched ability to answer the phone with people who are ready to buy right now. Now, I know you've gotten emails and phone calls from other guys making a bunch of promises, but I'm not so big that I can't care. I'm just big enough that I care a lot. My business counts on your business. So what makes my business unique is that this is a symbiotic relationship I'm looking to form. It's not a salesman relationship and a buyer relationship. It's not host parasite. I am calling you because I need a teammate. And that teammate has to be somebody in the water damage world who's willing to take these phone calls from me. That's painting the story. That's giving them a reason to listen to you. That is obviously not a story they've heard before. So everybody needs to make sure that they build their USP out properly and they're very comfortable with it. What makes it, and I'm going to also say this, fulfillment. I know that a lot of people get nervous about and so they say, well, I don't have websites ranking, and I don't have this, and I don't have that. Listen, here's a way around it. I use a blended media source to generate phone calls. I use a blended media source to generate phone calls. I just happen to have phone calls that are coming in to your area. That's why I'm on the phone with you. You don't have to define what you do. You're not selling advertising. You're not representing them. You're not selling marketing to determine share. You're not doing that. You're an industry direct response professional. You are direct response marketing. You advertise to a group in a certain area. You collect the phone call and you distribute it directly. That's what makes you unique. Okay. So anybody get questions about unique selling proposition? Or does anybody have questions or, or need help figuring out what that would be? I'm sure. I'm sure. <clears throat> I'm sure we'll have lots of questions from that inquiry. So, what do you guys think so far? Just real quick, a little pulse check. Give me a three if you guys think this kicks ass, and you guys are glad you actually got on today's call. Awesome. So, uh, I want to ask another question. Um, if I brought John to the July event, and John and I had a big selling workshop, right, where we carved out some of the time that we have together as a community to become an expert salesperson. Um, Give me a four if you're not coming and you would come. Give me a four right now. Okay, just from what you guys have seen so far. <laughs> but we got a funny comment in here with John. Somebody says, does he eat his young? <laughs> four, four, four. Lots of fours. All right, great. So, guys, 
John and I will be chatting at the event together and working with you guys on sales. Okay, so big, big announcement. Uh, that has finally been put in the bag. Okay, so if you're not coming yet to the event, you need to get your ass there. Okay, the link is in the chat, web1.co slash July hyphen mastermind. I want to add to that to that one statement, Joe, is that, um, you know, when we do these these events, they're not just during the hours. <laughs> part of part of they're not just that. not the hours of the event. I mean, you know, we we go and we we you know I tend to cause a ruckus in the event themselves. Um, and and I think I went to the bar 18 times last time in the middle <laughs> of, of people talking. But the 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 extra benefit here, guys, is that I can tell you, and some of you who have reached out to me, I can tell you that this is not something you will be able to buy. So if you're not going or if you were on the fence about going, go because I don't sleep. So if it's 3 o'clock in the morning and the hotel bar is open, you, can, you got my attention. We can sit down and we can talk about whatever you guys want. So I don't want you to feel like it's, it's uh, you know, you got this one opportunity. I'll be there all weekend long to talk to you guys whenever you want and I'll do my best. I know Joe will as well to make sure that's uh, accommodating for everybody. Awesome, awesome. Fantastic. Cool guys. <clears throat> All right, so um, John, I'm just going to start spitballing, man, and throwing you some questions that I'm getting from everybody. We got a lot in here. The, the chat is blowing up, so uh, bear with me. I, I think it's probably going to be a little random, uh, and if Let's we get it. on a good topic, man, we can just kind of run from there on a couple of things. So. Right, no um, let's see. Natalie says she's had four consults where the client was excited and ready to start, and they were very clear on the pricing. But as soon as she sent them the outline, they somehow changed their mind. So she followed up several times. No luck. Any recommendations? Okay. So what you have there is is uh, pretty typical. Um, it's somebody who is afraid to tell you no on the phone or somebody who's afraid to divulge the real reason why they can't buy. So let me put it to you this way. When you have something that everybody needs, which is the new business, you have a price point that's well within the industry standard. It means you're not buying anything special. And you have done your job to get them on the phone and very interested to the point where you send them an ITO. What could possibly be the reason that they don't sign it and send it back? I'm going to tell you what that is. Money. They don't got it. They don't got it. Some people can't tell you that. Some people won't tell you that. Some people are ashamed to tell you that, but they don't got it. So, and Joe, this might be an advanced move, but I'm going to say it because that's why I'm here. But I think I've told a couple of you this little story. If I asked you to go to the West Palm Beach Mall, strip down butt naked, and run streaking through that mall, but before you do it, I'm going to give you a million dollars in cash money right now. Would you do it? Sure, you're going to have to spend two days in jail. You might end up on the news for being a cuckoo bird. But you're going to have a million dollars in cash before you take your pants off. Okay? I'm going, to, I'm going to do that right now. You guys go do it. Everybody would jump on that bandwagon and do it. Now, I'm going to change the deal up a little bit. Just a little. I want you to strip down and run through that same mall. And I'm going to give you a million dollars to do it but I'm only going to pay you a dollar a day. You do it. You're doing the same exact thing. The risks are the same. The action is the same. And the dollars are the same. What's different? What's different are the terms. Terms. Terms of the deal make or break it more importantly than the cost of the deal. There are deals where you could get $500 a lead where the market value says it's only 300 because your terms are correct. Because your terms match what the buyer needs. So something that we'll teach or show or begin to, to outline in, in the mastermind group in July will be how to structure terms that don't screw you. Okay? And there's some, there's some varying ways to do it. But to answer your question very specifically and finalize it, it's, it's a money issue. If somebody has talked to you, confirmed, you sent them an ITO, we call them ITOs, which is an inbound traffic order. When we send out an ITO and somebody says, yeah, yeah, they're going to sign it, what they're really doing is sitting down at the end of the night going, can I afford this? 
It's not, I don't like this person. It's not, I don't believe this person. It's, I can't afford this. And so one of the things we'll teach you is how to follow up with terms that do not put you behind the eight ball, but help you solve the customer's problem. Okay? Awesome. <clears throat> so let's see. Uh, next up. How would you respond to a prospect who is already working with a quote-unquote lead gen company? What's to respond with? <laughs> if that's I mean, their rebuttal, so to I speak. Already, I'm work, no, I'm working. sorry. I'm already working with XYZ. Great. No, I, listen. I, trust me. I talk to 500 people a day who are already working with somebody. I'm not here to tell you that guy's bad. I'm just, to, I'm just here to tell you why my deal's better. But I understand that if your budget does not allow you to participate in more than one lead gen opportunity and spread your risk, I understand that. The only thing I want to do is let you take my contact information down, and I want to check up and follow up with you in about two or three weeks, see how things are going. That's it. Put them on your wine list. Bottle it, put it in the cellar, and come back to it. So this is beautiful. This talks about Greg Thorpe. Um, I guess his one of his big takeaways was was the money part, right? It sounds like he probably would have had a no from the prospect, right? It was all about the terms. So the way that Greg got the deal signed was multiple payments instead of one up front, and the lead gen doesn't start until the retainers right in full, right? Until they're at that full amount. So a uh, great little tidbit there for you guys. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, Joe, I th you would you, know, you keep going with the questions because I know you got a lot of them. Uh, uh, Greg, a little sidebar here, not so much of a question. Said if they're buying leads already, they seem more interested in my pitch. Some great little feedback there. Um, how do you get past the get lost gatekeeper response? Um, well. <laughs> That's a good question because everything kind of lines up and, and plays its part. The only way you're going to get a get lost is if you sound like a sales guy. That's the only way. I mean, I, I can tell you that uh, there's a few ways in through the door. It's first, hey, Susie, you don't know me from Adam, but I hope you can help me. I'm going to tell you that fundamentally gatekeepers, and if anybody is a secretary or a gatekeeper, please do not be offended. This is a sales learning class, so I'm going to just do it. Um, secretaries and people who answer the phone are not given a lot of authority. They're not given a lot of power. In fact, if you think about it, the only power they have is to keep people like us out. So they're very diligent with trying to find ways to do that. Now, how do you combat a gatekeeper whose only mission in life is to keep guys like us away from their bosses? You give them more power than their boss does. And you do that by asking for help. The power of asking for help supersedes their paycheck. So you call up and you say, hi, Susie, uh, who can I talk to at your company that, that can buy some leads? Oh, we're not interested, click. Hi, Susie, you don't know me from Adam. My name is John, I'm a local guy and I need some help. Could you think you could give me some direction? What did I do? I intentionally shifted power to her. I put her in a position of not telling me to hang up the phone click, but I put her in the position to help me to be a decision maker. It's psychology. So the power of asking for help goes a long way. You guys should all try that if people are giving you trouble getting through the door. Start it off with asking for help. Okay. Awesome, awesome. <clears throat> Let's see, Luke Baston says, uh, what about, I have no intention of changing our current marketing plan. Okay. I know how you would probably handle this one. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm, just, I'm just gonna be polite here and say that, um, you know, everybody has to realize, Joe, that there are buyers and there are not buyers. Yeah. We have no intention on changing our marketing plan. Okay, well, what do you wanna do about it? You, do you, would you give me five minutes so I can explain why your current marketing sucks? Yeah. I mean, or I mean, you know, I, I, you could you could do it any way you want, but really, the the objective here is that when we're when we're dialing for dollars, Joe, when we're picking up that phone and we're slamming that headset, 
The last thing we want to do is diddle around for 10 minutes talking to somebody who has no intent to buy. You never want to be in a position where you convince somebody to do something they don't want to do or can't afford to do because then you will always be on the defensive with your deal. All of a sudden, every phone call sucks. All of a sudden, nobody's qualified caller. All of a sudden, my secretary's too busy answering your shitty phone calls. You name it. When you convince someone to do something they don't want to do, trust me, I've got two ex-wives that would tell you this is exactly how it works. When you convince someone to do something you don't want them to do, you become the enemy. And you're no longer part of the team. You're no longer building relationships. You're no longer building rapport. You simply sit on the defensive line. You have to stand there with your shotgun and protect yourself and protect your deal. So there will be just some guys out there that, that won't let their guard down, and those are the guys you have to pass on. There's others that as you get more confident, confident and comfortable, you'll understand why they say what they say and you can come around them. But that's a, uh, probably the most advanced issue. So I don't want you guys to get discouraged by trying to argue your way in through a door. I, I would prefer you to just simply say, okay, it's not a good time. Put them on your wine list and call them back in a month. Okay? If you want to expand on that, you can, but that's how I, I mean, I just think that's the best piece of advice for, for guys who are bulldo bulldozing. Yep, for sure. I agree. Same, same, uh, same principle there. Um, let's see. Natalie said that she's had lots of uh, good, re or good results asking for help from the gatekeeper, so she said that that tip was a really good one. She said she's basically always been able to get through the gatekeeper, you know, asking for actual help. Mm-hmm. So in the construction and trades types of niches, John, we deal a lot with people that are used to percentage of revenue type deals, right? Roofing guys, uh, water damage guys, uh, higher end like that, right? They're used to paying out sales guys that way, and they've, they've actually convinced a lot of people inside the lead gen game to, to get paid out like that as well. If you were hit with you know, uh, a rebuttal, hey, I'll pay you 20% or I'll pay you 10% of what comes in, how would you handle it? No. Uh, truthfully, Joe, it takes, some, it takes a, a certain caliber person with a certain amount of cash flow and a certain understanding of the business. You know, you, by all means, and your team could possibly comfortably go after a deal like that. But when you're talking about guys where every dollar counts, every call counts, it's not something I would suggest doing. Now, how do I deal with it when they say I want to do revenue share? Okay. <laughs> Basically, what you're telling me, Mr. Customer, is that you're only willing to pay me after I do the work. Uh, I understand that, so let's just walk through this and let me paint a different picture to make sure I've got it clear. You tell me when the last time you went to a grocery store was, and you get to the checkout counter with your basket full of groceries. And the manager walks over to you and says, hey, sir, it looks like you've got a lot of groceries there. Yes, ma'am, I sure do. Great. Well, I'll tell you what. I'm going to make you a deal of a lifetime. I'm going to let you take those groceries home for free. No money, no nothing. Just go out to the car, load it up, and go home. But when your wife, when your husband, when your brother, when your sister, when somebody cooks dinner with those groceries, and everybody at the table's happy, you can come back and pay me for those groceries you just walked out with. When does that happen? When does it happen? It never does. Listen, if I wanted to be a commissioned sales guy in the roofing business, I would come apply for a job. If I wanted to be a commissioned sales guy in the, roo a guy in the roofing business, if I could guarantee you a successful client or contract from it, then I would own my own roofing business. I cannot possibly base the success or the failure of my business or the ability to feed my family on your ability to fix a roof. That's how I do it. I have experience. I have enough margin and enough clout in my deals. I still don't take those deals. I think Joe will attest that they've taken a couple of those deals when they were very certain of the business's history and ability yep. to deliver. My uh, my rule of thumb is to never do a percentage deal until you've you know you're really comfortable in the industry. 
So uh, the threshold that I use is that you've had at least three clients in that vertical spread out, not in one city, right? So that you really understand the numbers. You understand what the average transaction size is, not what the business owner quoted you and told you it was, sold you on, right? <laughs> what it actually is, right? Uh, and the same goes for their conversion rate and everything else, right? You don't want to be the dummy. Um, if you are on your first, second, third, or I, I mean just uh, under 10 deals, you shouldn't even consider it, right? You don't have enough experience to catch the problems before they pile up in your face and all of a sudden now you got a big problem, right? If, We've if had clients... Still, if We've had clients on a percentage of revenue that have left us owing us tens of thousands of dollars in revenue. Let's put it that way, right? So what are you going to do if that happens, right? And not to be a narcissistic asshole, right? But that tens of thousands of dollars meant a lot less to me than it meant to you, right? If you're under 10 clients, right? You don't have the cash flow to float that. Does that make sense, right? So until you have the cash flow to float a deal and take a chance, you shouldn't be taking chances, right? You shouldn't be trying to hit that grand slam. You need to get on base 10 times and get your revenue going. I'll, I'll, tell, you, I'll tell you that, you know, essentially what they're asking you to do, has everybody here seen Shark Tank? I'm sure they have. Essentially, when, when a client asks you to do rev share, you're becoming an investor. They're at, that's what they're asking. They're asking you to invest in them. You become an investor in that business. And what kind of vetting would you normally do if your buddy, your friend, your neighbor, some guy you met on the street called you up and said, hey, I would like you to invest $10,000 in my roofing company? That's the equivalent. So I want, you to, I want everybody to put it in perspective. They're asking you to invest your capital, whether it's in human resources, in financial resources, or uh, creative capital, um, intellectual property, they're asking you to commit an investment to them. And so if you understand all of that, I think you're going to view it in a whole different light. At the same time, I think just as a marker as well, if you're still holding consults where you're asking the value of a lead, you don't need to even be contemplating doing rev share. Yeah. You don't know exactly what that lead is worth and exactly how many leads they're going to get and what their conversion ratio is. If they, if you're still asking questions that allow you to build a value for what you're selling, don't even think about it. Push it off. Okay? Cool, man. I think we powered through some questions, guys. Uh, let's see. Zeus says, I wish you, I had you, John, on my last prospecting call. <clears throat> so um, I think that that brings up a point that, that we want to kind of chat about with you guys, and, and I want you guys to understand as a community, whether it's John, whether it's me, or whether it's somebody else on the team, if you guys have a big, a big softball that gets lobbed at you, right, for a potentially really big deal, don't feel like you have to go at it alone, right? Reach out to me. I'll either help you, I'll get on the call with you, or I'll refer you out to somebody else in the community that can help you on that call. Okay? Don't feel like you got to go jump on a, on a call with a franchise that has seven locations and try to prove it all yourself, right? Does that make sense, guys? There's lots of people on this call that would jump on, on that deal with you and help you close that deal. Yes, yes, yes. Cool. Um, John, let's transition for a second, if it's cool with you, um, and, and kind of wrap this up. Um, can you talk about maybe one or two of the verticals that you've been in or you are in and, and drop a little bit of knowledge in terms of numbers, um, in terms of what calls go for or any terminology or, or anything like that? Talk about yeah. a, little, a little bit about markets instead of sales. I think that that will help open up some, some eyes as well. Okay, so that's a good point. So just like we talked about earlier that the sales material and the sales sequence, the processes that you guys are teaching is meant as a catalyst or an inspiration for them to figure out their own process map. The same is with niches. And I'm just going to say this. I have rarely been in a room where I've met so many people chasing the same damn client. I know that <laughs> Joe I I know that Joe you voiced your 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 thoughts on trying to get people to expand their knowledge and frankly because you do the 
process maps and because you do the sequencing and because people want to follow your example, people fo folks tend to get in boxed in. Okay, but what this is all supposed to do, guys, is open some creativity, get you guys thinking. So there's a couple of different things, and then I'll just I'm going to just shoot this stuff out there um, to show you how creative things can be. So I have uh, I, I'm big in the drug rehab drug addiction space. Okay, drug addiction. I've heard I've heard a couple of people say I want to get in that. I want to get into that. Da 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 da. Okay, so let me give you why drug addiction space is a unique character and why I chose it. Maybe this will help inspire you to pick a different unique niche. Drug rehab, you're dealing with the uh, most unreliable customer on the planet, a drug addict. <laughs> That's number one, which means there will always be a new customer. There are 23,000, 20, I'm sorry, 23 million new diagnoses every year for people suffering addiction every year, which means it's a huge market. The average cost of a patient is fifteen to thirty-three thousand dollars a month, which means they're super valuable. But when you combine that super value with super unreliability, today that rehab center may not want to buy a single call from you at fifty dollars. But if four four guys get together and decide to skip out at midnight, that just cost that rehab center two hundred thousand. So tomorrow you can now sell phone calls at one hundred and fifty a call, where yesterday you couldn't sell them for fifty. The other thing is because drug rehab requires certain insurance, for the most part, as well as geography and travel time. Most drug rehabs will take a national call base, so it's not super targeted, not super local. The other so aspect just to make of sure, just to make sure everybody's still on the same page with that one. Uh, most people will fly or travel to get drug rehab, right? To have the rehab, right? To travel to the facility, right? So, for example, a lot of people fly to California. A lot of people fly to Florida for drug rehab. Okay, why is that cool? Because you can advertise nationwide. You're not just advertising in California. Now, like. John said there are some ifs and gotchas in there, uh, but but for the most part that's the case. Right. And the only other real benefit, and this is part of what sniffing out a unique niche does, is that it's a volume business. You don't go sell a drug rehab center 20 phone calls. A drug rehab center is looking for a needle in a haystack. They're looking for the one in 50 caller that has the right insurance who's willing to go to California and seek treatment today. So it's a volume business. So when you sell your phone calls, you're selling blocks of phone calls. You're selling 100 calls, 200 calls, 500 calls, 1,000 calls. Um, I'll tell you that um, Dean and John and some of the other guys who I've been working with to help them with their sales, these guys are negotiating deals for hundreds if not thousands of calls, which makes the deal incredibly interesting for people like us. So it, there's a certain set of unique characteristics that make drug rehab valuable. I'll, I'll say one more thing with the like windows, um, impact in hurricane windows. In South Florida, we have something called impact windows. These are essentially, they're not, but it's essentially bulletproof glass. And by, by different counties, there are different laws. These laws require people who are insuring, buying, and selling homes to have these certain types of windows. Now, anywhere else in the country, you can go buy a hurricane window for $300, maybe $500. But in South Florida, that same window is $2,500. In fact, in Florida alone, the average deal for a window, for a window replacement, is fifty dollars to $60,000. That makes the, the phone call super valuable. So it's one of those things where it's not worth anything in Kansas, it's not worth anything in Washington, but it's worth everything in Florida, finding that unique opportunity. Okay? Joe, do you not want more Not that it's examples? not worth anything, it's just a penny, right? I mean, it's, it's a fraction. Oh, yeah, yeah. And, I mean, uh, the me, difference is insane. And, and, I mean, there's really more than just Florida, right? Uh, but Florida is definitely the hot spot. Well, yeah. Oh no. Listen. I mean, here's the deal. Uh, you know, there's 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 plenty of opportunity to go nationwide with it. 
what I'm saying is to be inspired when you're looking at niches. I mean, you know, I know that we have plans uh, to go nationwide with the window thing because it's valuable. There's no not value. What the lesson here is not about this being valuable only in Florida. The lesson here is about finding the opportunity that is unique. Find that catalyst that you can use to create a new niche industry or a new niche market for yourself. Yep, it's that pocket within the niche, the niche within the niche. That's right. Sure. Cool guys, so any quick questions on drug rehab or windows? Guys, for John real quick, kind of last call for any questions. If you guys would, just in the chat, just say thanks, John, so I can send him a screenshot of this. I appreciate your help, man, and I don't want to take yeah. up too much of your time, but give him a little preview of what's to come at the event, get everybody excited, give him a little kick in the butt. I'm there. Uh, amazing webinar today. Thank you, thank you. Top stuff. Awesome, awesome. All right, guys, get out there. Kick ass. I don't see any more questions, man. Thanks so much, awesome. John, for coming on. I really Hi, appreciate brother. you, brother. And I look forward to uh, catching up in person. Let me know when you're flying in. Awesome. we Will do. All right, guys. See ya.